Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel and in my last video a couple friends and I went on a pretty epic day trip in the middle of California and we ended up visiting these really cool caves. If you want to see the entire vlog of that fun trip, I'll leave the link in the info box but for this video, I wanted to talk about an ancient and fantastic legend I learned after the trip involving the caves and its surrounding area. And it involves particularly the cave we added last minute to our itinerary, and that is Moaning Caverns. So let's begin with just hearing me ramble about how we ended up at Moaning Caverns to begin with. Let's go. So I was saying this trip was a very spur of the moment for me. I just got a text from a friend asking if I was available to visit this cave that she saw on Facebook and the cave looked really cool. So I said yes and then we invited another friend and luckily she said yes too. So we are the happy trio, the three musketeers on the way to visit a cave that is a three hour drive from us. So let's set the scene a little bit. It was a really, really hot Friday summer day. So I believe we went in mid or end of july and the city that we are in is alcito california it is toward the middle literally the middle center of california and around the summertime it goes over 100 degrees and that day it was close to 100 degrees it was super super hot and this cool cave is known as coyote creek cave and it can be found off of the natural bridges trailhead now this isn't even the cave that this legend is based off of. The cave is about three to five miles away from Coyote Creek Cave. And as we were driving towards the cave that we initially planned to visit, we saw a sign that says Moan Caverns. And we're like, you know what? That looks interesting. Let's book it. So as we were driving past that entrance of the cave, we literally just jumped on our phones and we booked tickets. So that is how spontaneous this trip was and to be honest i had no idea that there was this amazing legend attached to the area and this cave itself and i had no clue until after my visit and then i started researching about it um, mainly because the name had the word moaning in it and i was just curious on why it had the word moaning and then i just went through a rabbit hole and this is how we got to the story we have today Moaning Caverns, everyone. Moaning Caverns today is heavily touristic. The only way you can see the cave is through a paid tour. What we turned this amazing cave into is basically a theme park. Not only can you do splunking there, which was really cool, they have so many different tours you can take. The main tour is basically you just going into 100 something feet into the cave to the main room, which is amazing, but they also have like several other types of uh, splunking expeditions where literally you're just squeezing yourself through these tight little crevices and you get all like dirty and like muddy and cold. True caving experience. But they also have um, zip lining as an option, panning for gold, which I still haven't done yet, but would love to do someday. And they have a gift shop. But Moaning Cavern was not always like this. You wouldn't even find Moaning Cavern back in the day unless you accidentally fall right into it. And you wouldn't even be able to tell the tale afterwards because if the drop does not kill you, which is a good about 50 to 100 feet drop, depending on where you land, but it is impossible, impossible to climb back out. So let's begin the story and history of Moaning Caverns. In American history, as in the United States history, the cave was first discovered in 1851 by a group of miners looking for gold. So if you, those of you guys that do not know the history of California, there was this period where a ton of people migrated to California in search of gold. And this was known as the gold rush era of 18. 49, which is why we have the term and a football team known as the 49ers. When this first group of miners first discovered this cave, they only had poor equipment to lower themselves. So literally, they only had like a candle and some oil to light the way and then some cheap rope with a really, really cheap, poor 
police system to lower themselves because the cave itself is so deep that they couldn't explore properly so they abandoned ship. That very same year on December 7th, California's first geologist, Dr. John Trask, came to explore the cave. He found four rooms. The main room, a second room below it, which is another 100 feet down, and two more rooms. In the second lower room is where he found several human skeletons. In the news article from the Daily Alta Californian dated in October 31st, 1853, a group of Frenchmen had also explored the cave up to 300 feet in depth and claimed to have seen at least 300 human bodies petrified and enclosed in the cave's staglets, staglitites, stag, stalactites, oh my gosh, I know how to say the other one, staglomites, right? Am I pronouncing that wrong too? Staglomites and staglitites. And the fact that they were petrified within these cave rock formations was very fortunate for us because this was how scientists was able to age the bones. So how did they find the age of the bones exactly? I wondered as well, so I looked it up. And it was through the calculations of the age of the staglitites and the staglomites. So scientists know that the growth of the staglitites and the staglomites are made by micro measurements to the 100th of a millimeter. These measurements are calculated at the maximum rate of deposition of minerals to be 29 years per millimeter or 736 years per inch of growth. You can imagine if this took somewhere one to two million to form its column, let alone to form its stalagmite. Stalactites come together. Today's stalagmite he is pure calcite and I have a bunch of fun facts about him for you. Like from bottom to top, he is 25 feet tall. He is 500,000 years old. There are human bones found in the lower levels with dripstone accumulation that can be measured at least 12,000 years old to up to 50,000 years old, you guys. And apparently there are more cave rooms to explore that we haven't explored to this day, so who knows what else we might find in those caves. Now the biggest question is, how did these people end up in the cave in the first place. There are no evidence in the cave to show that it has been lived in. There's no pottery, no um, like clothing or tools and stuff like that that shows that humans had lived in the cave. So the question is, could they have all fallen into the caves? A lot of caves you will see is like a is like a walk-in, like there's just this little doorway where you kind of just walk into the cave. For Moaning Cavern, the entrance is more of a slant. So when you kind of like walk, like you're hiking up the hill and then you walk, you literally fall in and the drop is just atrocious, you guys. It's most people would die from a drop like that. So it was literally a hole in the ground and the drop can be over a hundred feet deep. And if you survive the fall, there's no way of climbing out and there is no light. So you are just in pitch darkness. That is truly a horrific way to die. Just imagine you just fall in a hundred feet who knows what kind of injuries you have, like two broken legs, several broken ribs, broken collarbone. You're just in so much pain and you can't see a thing, literally just darkness. And there's no way of climbing out. The walls around you are just slimy and slippery. There's no good holds and you're just injured just thinking about it. It's really, really horrific. There's also another theory on how there are so many bodies found in the cave. And this leads us to a legend that has been around for thousands of years and connected with the Sierra Miwok Native Americans, the original people that lived in the area. The Sierra Miwok tribe feared this cave as well as many of the other caves found in the area. They believe the caves are inhabited by an evil and ancient spirit, a giant that would come out at night in search of humans to eat. The moaning that can be heard in these caves were the cries of the giant's victims. So I came across two stories regarding these giants. Both stories have their similarities to each other. This is the short story compared to the other one. The other one is unnecessarily long. But this one can be found in the University of California publications in American Archaeology and 
Ethnology, Myths of the Southern Sierra Miwok by S.A. Barrett. This is the story of the six peoplings of the world. The Miwoks believe that there were six peoples, six different groups of people that have lived on Earth, and five already have been extinct, and the ones that are living on Earth today are the six group of people, lings, peoplings. And it so happens that the giant is the reason why the first peoplings are gone. The first people were just like the present Indians. Everything went well with them until the great cannibal giant, Uwulin, appeared in the north, where he commenced to eat people. Uwulin was a big giant who went about with a hunting sack on his back in which he places his prey. His hand was so large that he could, at a single grasp, hold a person between each two of his fingers. His hunting sack was so large that it can hold all the people of a village at once. He had neither brain, blood, nor original heart. His heart, his only vulnerable point, was in a tiny spot in his heel. The people did not, however, know its location yet. Finally, when there were only a few people left in the world, they all came together to discuss how they might be rid of the giant. At last, Fly found him asleep and beginning at his head, traveled over every part of his body, biting him everywhere. Yuulin gave no sign of feeling Fly's bites until his heel was reached. When Fly bit his heel, he kicked and Fly knew he had found the vulnerable spot. Fly returned to his people and announced his discovery. All wondered how they might kill Yuulin. It was finally decided that they should make a large number of awls, each about an inch in diameter and a foot long. These were placed all along the trail traveled by Yuulin, and in such a manner that he could not walk without stepping on them. Finally, one of them pierced his heart. He died immediately. And that is the end of the story. And this apparently all happened near the town of Hulteville. I just want to quickly say thank you guys so much for listening to the story and I really hope you enjoyed it and I will see you in my next story. Thank you and bye! You got my butt? No, I'm just <laughs> Say hi! The part of the rock. <laughs>